hey guys welcome back to my channel in today's video i'm going to be setting up my budget for the month of february so this is going to be a long video disclaimer go ahead and grab your budget planner grab your dinner grab your drinks or your snacks and let's get into it all right y'all so for the month of february i'm going to be using my february stickers i did already pre-fill some things in just to kind of expedite the time so um these stickers are available on my website my shop and then also i did kind of go through my march kit um, which is also available on the website as well if you're interested in these stickers so i'm going to get started with the um calendar sheet so before i <clears throat> get started with each month i always just go ahead and get the calendar situated and you guys do have to excuse me if i sound a little bit rough um <laughs> i am so tired i have just been like working non-stop which i'm going to get a little bit into that more um in the video as we start to fill in things for the month of february okay, so i have went ahead and put my date dots down um off camera just because that saves me time i do like to put just the little washi strips um down at the bottom i call them like they're like deco washi um just to kind of like close the budget out or tie it all in it's not necessary but it makes it just look that much prettier to me so there you go so when i am setting up my budget planner the first thing i like to do is go through and put down all of my paydays and just a little disclaimer this is your first time um watching my videos i am a solo budgeter so i am not married and i do not have children so i just budget just for me um, I don't even have any pets. I used to, and I thought about getting another one. Um, my pet passed away some years ago. I thought about getting another one, but I have recently really gotten into like traveling. So I'm like, yeah, that's not going to work. Cause then I would need always have to like depend on somebody to help me with the pet. And, um, <laughs> yeah, I just figured it probably wasn't for the best right now. Um, Hmm. I'm going to put it right here. So, uh, what else? Yes, I'm a, I'm a solo budgeter and, um, I budget with cash. So I use the cash envelope system, not for everything, but for most things I do use the cash envelope system. I am a paper budgeter. I'm not a digital budgeter. Um, let's see. I am a small business owner, so, um, I get paid from my business which consists of youtube my etsy shops affiliate marketing all that good stuff so um yeah there are certain things in my finances that i don't disclose just for like privacy because there are people in my real life who watch who i know in real life who watch my videos and um i don't want that information out there so you guys will see that but i get paid twice a week so this week I didn't this was technically still january so this paycheck went toward january's um revenue so my first paycheck for the month of february will be this friday so this month i have one two three four five six seven oh, i still have eight okay so i have eight paydays um so that's what i start with then i move on to putting down um when my bills are due so i did already go ahead and pre-fill out my bills um just to spare us the time so we're gonna go ahead and get started with rent as you guys know um if you rent or have a mortgage or anything like that it's always due on the first um of each month so my rent and utilities are actually paid together so the complex that i am that i stay in they have it together so there's not a separate bill for that next is going to be my health insurance and this is due right after rent so the first part of my months are very um, expensive <laughs> between rent, utilities. I pay for my own health insurance because of um, being self-employed. So 
Netflix is going to be due on the 6th and I use tweezers um, just because it kind of gives me a better like have things sit more straight than with my fingers and I have my nails so yeah my cell phone is due on the 8th so let's see oh I forgot to put a no 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 I'm tripping wait do I get paid on yeah I get paid on Tuesdays I feel like something's supposed to happen on Wednesdays too and I have no idea what it was like am I missing something I don't know um, my shop app which is for my website is due on the 15th HP ink is a new subscription that I have for my business It's instant ink um, I thoroughly enjoy it so this is due on the 17th so I'm just put that right above payday my internet is due on the 20th and I'll oh, skip one car insurance and Apple are both due um, like on the 18th so these share a due date so that's why I put them on the same uh, bill due sticker you have enough space to do that and this is a seven by nine planner Erin Condren planner if you guys are curious or want to make sure that you get the right one the right size the size is seven by nine and this is an Erin Condren monthly planner so um, Hulu is due on the 23rd I have been using Erin Condren planners since 2014 so I can't believe it's been almost 10 years that's insane so I used to be a teacher right and mostly all of if you are a subby you know that and um, I fell in love with Erin Condren planners when I was teaching and that was in 2014 so like man if you would have told me you know a few years later that I would be like using her planners for this I probably would have been like you're crazy <laughs> okay so these are all my bills I still have extras left if I need them the next thing that I, I like to do in my planner is notate any important events going on in the month that are going to affect my budget so um, I was supposed to be going on a trip this month but my shops have been so crazy busy that I just couldn't make it this month and this has happened to me before especially around the beginning of the year um, when people are trying to get their budgets together that tends to be kind of a um, busy time of the year for my shops so I was planning on going to New Orleans with two friends um, they are still going I am not because me and mom will be working but I'm very grateful um, for the work so I'm not complaining at all and we have another trip planned for uh, March <laughs> so I didn't go on a trip last month because we were fasting and then I'm missing my trip this month because of work but I have been working in my shop by myself all month until this week mom is back helping me so with mom back helping me um, I should be in a better place in a few weeks so um, I will not be going on my trip but the events that are coming up in this month is my brother and sister-in-law's baby shower on the 11th so it's their first baby so we are all like super stoked so I will be buying my niece a gift we have Super Bowl Sunday on the 12th which I think my best friend is throwing a Super Bowl party at her house um, so if that's the case your girl will be there I think my mom is also doing something for Super Bowl Sunday so yeah I'll probably be double booked and then I am having my own Valentine's Day party so I just moved into my own apartment and um, as a self-employed person so I'm super excited and just to kind of you know kick off my new place I am throwing a Valentine's Day party then the 14th is Valentine's Day so those are the only events 
that I know of in this month so far that are going to affect my budget. Um, so this is pretty much the bones of my budget planner. Stickers to, you know, motivate me, put my paydays down, put my bills down, put down any events that are going to affect my budget as the month goes on. I do like to notate, um, if I can pick it up, my no spend days. So this was January's spread. So as you can see, I put the no spend days. As the month goes on, I tend to need more of those event stickers, but that's what we have it looking like. Okay, so the very next page over is typically where I like to start my monthly budget. Um, just because I like to have it right behind the calendar page is just easy to refer to for the month. So I'm going to be using my February budget kit. And I always come down here to the second line of my planner and just line it up. And I'm doing this kind of sideways because my new setup is a little bit different at my um, old place where I used to live. I was able to kind of do like an overhead situation and it's just a little bit harder because of the layout of my new place. So if things are not completely <laughs> straight, y'all just don't mind me. So, I'm gonna get the washi strips down and then I'm gonna go ahead and notate that my business is my source of income. And then I look, I like to put miscellaneous just in case something comes in. That typically doesn't happen unless it's like Christmas or my birthday. Um, other than that, I don't really get any miscellaneous income, but you know, you never know. So I like to put that down. And I don't disclose my income just for the simple fact that, um, you know, I am self-employed, so it just makes it a little bit more difficult um, to show exactly, you know, like what I make because you have to take out expenses and taxes and all kind of stuff. So I just kind of do that as the month goes on um, off camera. But I will show you guys my variable expenses, my bills and all that good stuff. So it's a little, it gets a little awkward on this side. Usually I like flip my planner around to put these stickers down <laughs> on this side. But now that I'm doing it on camera, I have to, you know, have it not look so awkward for you guys. I hope that doesn't look too awkward. So we're gonna go ahead and get into the um, variable expenses. So I have a spending gas, groceries, um, home, and home consists of like um, soap, cleaning supplies, toilet paper, all that stuff. Eating out, um, medicine, and medicine is a part of my budget because I do have um, allergies. I do have eczema, so well, I don't. I don't really have problems with my eczema. Only sometimes, mainly allergies. Um, but yeah, beauty and laundry, which is a new expense for me. Laundry is not something that I had previously. So for the month, for spending, I'm going to budget forty dollars. For gas, I work from home, so I'm doing 180, 180, I don't know why I put 181. <laughs> I'm looking at my mock budget. For groceries, this has definitely gone up to 280. I'm like, y'all, if I have to spend $300 a month on groceries for myself, we have a problem, okay? Home is getting 60. Eating out is getting 120, which is down from last month. Last month, I think I budgeted 150. So we've gone down a little bit on that. Meds always gets 40. Um, beauty is going to get 200. So for beauty, I get my lashes done and I get pedicures. And then laundry, I'm gonna do 30. Um, I think that will be sufficient, but I'm not sure, we'll have to say. So for fixed expenses, which ties is not really a fixed expense, but I just put it on this side. Um, I think it definitely could probably go under variable, but 
whatever we'll leave it like this for now then i have my rent and utilities and then i have my phone my car insurance my health insurance my apple hulu and netflix subscriptions so apple and i could like put this all into one to say like subs but i think i like to keep it separate because um you know sometimes they just kind of like go up on this stuff and you don't really notice or or pay attention to it so um yeah so i don't disclose tithes and rent but my phone will be 79 last month it was 77 even though i budget 79 my car insurance was up last month i didn't get a chance to call them to see what the heck happened but rest assured if it goes up again this month i will be calling my health insurance is 322 dollars that has gone up um self-employed health insurance is uh interesting to say the least and all of my subscriptions so far have remained the same. Um, I'm missing internet. Yes, I didn't put internet, which is my Wi-Fi. My internet bill is $31. And also um, for like bills and things like that, guys, I always round up to the next, to the nearest dollar because trying to, keep up with cents when you have like auto payments and or you pull cash out you know it just makes it harder so i just round up and then if i have a little bit of money extra left over at the end of the month few cents whatever it all works out so this is the budget so i'm gonna go ahead and put the um total strips down which is just where i will notate whatever the total was Y'all, it's so hard doing it like this way instead of the normal way that I do it, which is like flipping my planner all the way around. But I can't do it like that no more because now I do it on camera. <laughs> I'm thinking like the the more I do it, the more I'll get used to it. So um, it'll work out eventually or I'll get more comfortable rather eventually. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and lay down some additional expenses that come up throughout the month or like additional additional things that i either put money towards or pay towards throughout the month so that's going to include like my sinking funds um saving challenges travel all of that good stuff so we will go ahead and start with my um sinking funds and these are not like expenses but it is what I'm putting money toward. So I am going to hopefully be able to put about $400 toward my sinking funds. Um, you know, that's give or take, depending on how my month is going. If I can afford to put that much in, I will. If I can't, then I won't. So um, retirement. And even though I do have a retirement like sinking fund, I still want to keep this separate because during the times where maybe i can't stuff this much in my sinking funds i still like non-negotiable want to stuff 400 dollars in my retirement so next year i am going to be opening a roth um ira i did not do it this year because i didn't know how like the payments worked on it i had to call my bank um so they could tell me how the payments work for roth iras and I guess I could put in parentheses, this is a Roth. So you can only contribute like once a year or they can take like so much money out of your paycheck, every paycheck or something. Basically, it's not like a savings account where like you can kind of put money in however you want, whenever you want. It's not like that. So I was like, okay, so I guess I would rather just make like yearly contributions, one time yearly contributions. So that's why I went ahead and made a sinking fund for it. To just put a hundred dollars in there every single week god willing um to hopefully have six thousand to sixty five hundred dollars at the end of 
each year to max out my Roth IRA to get as much interest as I possibly can. Um, so yeah, I'm also going to be using my saving challenge money, which y'all will see. Um, and at the end of the year, my saving challenge money will, will be going into my Roth IRA for my Valentine's day parties. Somebody asked me about this, um, in my comments last week. So I'm going to budget 300. I was initially budgeting 500, but after I actually did the math of everything I want to get, it ended up being a, a lot less. So I think I can do it for 300. Um, yeah. So next will be savings challenge. So for this month, let's see, this was my January saving challenge and I sell these as well. Um, anything you see in the video that you might be interested in, there's a link down below. So I did complete my January challenge of $59 for February. We will be stuffing 26. So February is a low month and then it picks back up with higher amounts in March. So February is $26. Okay, um, next is going to be my speeding ticket, which I'm going to be paying uh, tomorrow. This is so freaking embarrassing. <laughs> so I paid half of my speeding ticket already. <laughs> I have to pay the other half tomorrow, so it'll be um, $147. So I went the route of um, probation, I guess where as long as you don't get another ticket and so in a certain amount of time and pay the, the fee um they'll dismiss it and it'll be like it never happened at least that's what they told me so um these are my additional expenses for the month or money that i'm putting or things that i'm putting money toward um for the month so i'm gonna go ahead and get this stripped down and then I'm gonna go ahead and um, calculate this these amounts. All right, so we have 400, 400, 300, um, where am I at, 26, and 147. So that's 1273. And I am hoping that um we can stay in that amount i'm gonna go ahead and tally this up so 40 180 280 60 120 40 200 and 30 is 950 and then these two blocks will be done off camera. So um, next we will go ahead and get into the dashboard page, which comes completely blank. And I just kind of um, use the dashboard boxes to fill it in. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this together. All right, y'all, so this is just a quick glance um, at my dashboard page. I just kind of put some things together using the deco sheet and the dashboard um, header scripts like these that you see here. Um, so I just kind of work on this throughout the month. I like to use it for work and as well as events, birthdays and things like that. All right, so we are gonna move on to the weekly check-in page this is where i set up my weekly check-in so that i can um track my expenses this is how i like to track my expenses i know some people use um different methods but i y'all know i'm a sticker girl plan a girl sticker girl and yeah so I track my variable expenses on this page. So 
those are the expenses and the categories that we tend to go over in in our budgets on a week to week basis so that is what i like to track on this page here and then i just count it out so i have one two three four five six seven okay yeah so i like to go through and um count count out my categories um so that i know where to put my strips down at and i so far i have eight categories no seven sorry seven categories so i count out eight spaces y'all i really may have to find me another overhead situation because this is my first time doing it like this like kind of being sideways with it and not having the camera overhead so i can just kind of do things like normal so i hope that y'all can still like see everything and everything is in good framing it's a little um awkward for me in this angle or a little uncomfortable um but I'm going to keep going with it and do the best that I can. And yeah, we'll see about getting <laughs> a different situation. I kind of have gotten used to it with my cash stuffings. So, and I actually think I prefer this way to do my cash stuffings. But for the budget video, it's a little bit difficult. We're trying to put the stickers down. So let's go ahead and get these categories filled in. So the same categories as you guys saw in the... Um, monthly budget spread is what I write down on this page and I used to do it like on a weekly basis but I realized doing it at the beginning of the month and just getting it out of the way is uh, gonna work out much better for me also just wanted to let you guys know that even though laundry is now a new variable expense for me um, it gets paid with a card. So again, I use cash, but it's not always like feasible in every situation. So this is one of those, um, situations where I'm not going to be using cash for laundry. I'm just going to pay for it with my card and I am expecting not to have to pay too much more than about $30 a month, um, if that. Another situation um, that I don't like to spend cash in is when I'm traveling. So I did try the cash system when I first started traveling. Um, I was, you know, saving the money in the envelopes and I was... Um, you know, took the money out, deposit in the bank before I left, and you know, I buy, I would buy my ticket and stuff, and put the uh, hotel on my card or whatever, and just try to pay myself back, and it just kind of became a lot. Um, so I just realized, like, you know what? I don't want to use the cash system for traveling. I so now what I do is um, I just give myself a budget for traveling, especially since it's just me. I just give myself a budget and um, try my best to, to stick to that budget while I'm on the trip. I do want to start including you guys into um, my trips. So technically, I was supposed to start vlogging my trips and I was going to start this weekend with the New Orleans trip so that y'all could see. I was going to kind of take y'all along with us on the little excursions that we were doing because um, my friend graduated from Tulane Law School so it was going to be like a law convention and I was so excited to go and then I was going to kind of like recap <laughs> the end of my day um, seeing how much I spent and then kind of doing like an overall you know end of trip summary of like hey did I stay in budget or did I not so that's how I do my trips I don't spend trips uh, I don't pay for things on trips in cash anymore just because it's a lot easier to just use my card. So like with the laundry, not using cash, it's much easier to just use my card. All right, so the last thing I'm gonna do is put this, um, let this final deco washi down and just kind of close it out. 
and that's it for the weekly check-in page all right y'all so this is my weekly check-in page i did go ahead and put the dates under week for each week um so technically we have one two three four and like a few days left in the month not completely sure how i'm gonna do that because it's like a midweek situation for that final week in february but um i'm guessing we'll just kind of figure it out as we get closer to that time of the month so this is what we're looking like so far we have our monthly spread with our paydays bills um specific events that are going to affect the budget then we have our monthly budget page on the left hand side right after the calendar and then we have our um, deco dashboard page and our weekly check-in so um, I usually just kind of leave this space blank because sometimes I end up using it when I'm closing out my budget at the end of the month sometimes I'll use this space to do calculations and things like that when I'm trying to reconcile so the next thing we're gonna get into are gonna going to be my sinking funds. So this is my sinking funds script that I will be using to set this page up. So just like all of the other pages, I just go to like the second line in the planner and just kind of line it up and place it down and take the script I'm a true planner girl if you know anything about the planner community this is what we do we use stickers we use tweezers <laughs> it's a whole thing so yeah I'm gonna place that down and if it's not perfect it's fine and I actually don't even know like the total amount of sinking funds that I have. I want to say 18 sinking funds, but I know that I got rid of some of them. So I kind of feel like I don't know if I still have 18 or not, um, but we're going to go ahead and write them out. OK, I hope you guys don't mind. I did go ahead and pull out my um, sinking funds binders just because I did not have these amounts um, prior to starting the video. So for my birthday sinking fund, I have $38 in there. This envelope used to be called business, but I changed it to retirement. This is my retirement envelope and I have $219 in there. For LASIK, I'm at 1,114. I don't know if y'all can even see those. So 11, 14. And I do have some um, placeholders in my binders to represent 1K. For outings, I have $35. I'm just going to do CM for car maintenance. I always do that. Let's see what we have. We have 113 for car maintenance. Miscellaneous. This is just like an envelope just for like anything that comes up that doesn't have an envelope. <laughs> $19. for gifts I have $41 this is my favorite envelope y'all this is my guy baby 14 this envelope was also repurposed it used to be um travel but again like I told y'all earlier I realized that I did not want to um, spend cash in um, on trips and stuff. So I got rid of that envelope and gave it to my guy, baby. For church, I have $16. Well, let me show y'all because I 
<laughs> did show y'all so $16 this is not for offering or tithes it's just extra stuff that come up extra giving and stuff which I actually do want to start stuff in that more because when I see like people in need you know or I want to be able to give them something um, and then for medical I have $151 That was the pink binder. We will move on to the black binder. So car tags are next. And my car registration renewal, whatever it's called, is due this summer. So I have $73 and I only need um, $100 to renew, to do the inspection and get the new stickers. It costs me like right at a hundred dollars for electronics we are at 23 for emergency we are at 1235 Or giveaways we're at 14 for Christmas I'm at 23 and functions this envelope is for um going to like holiday events and stuff i have 12 dollars in there so things that come up around the holidays friends givings and thanksgiving christmas and i go to other people's houses i have to <laughs> contribute car tires has 56 dollars so these are all of my sinking funds y'all as you can see um, I want to say, like I said, I think it's um, 18 of them, if I'm not mistaken. But I'm going to go ahead and tally up this amount um, off camera and then come back and let y'all know how much all of this is. All right. So for the total of my sinking funds, we have $3,196. Again, all this money is not in cash. A good 2000 something of it is in the bank. So um, this is what we're working with. I did empty out all of my sinking funds at the end of December. And so I'm kind of starting fresh. I did keep um, my LASIK, my emergency, my car tires, car tags, and Christmas envelopes. But all my other envelopes got, um, got emptied. So I will keep track of this throughout the month and see where I am at the end of this month for the total. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and we will set up my business budget. All right, y'all, so this is my business budget sheet. And this technically comes before the personal budget, but um, because I keep this budget at the back of my monthly spread, I just go ahead and just, you know, set it up at the end um, because it does go on um, the back of the spread. So what you guys are going to see for my business budget is pretty much like my main expenses, um, what I spend my money on and I'm not for the business and I'm not going to go into numbers, but, um, I am going to set it up and show you guys how I use it because this has really been a life changer for me. Um, so like if you guys, I don't know, have a side hustle or a small business and you have to like do your own taxes and things like that you know having some having something to do something you know of the sort whether it's digital plan or whatever where you can like work your numbers out for your business is very important so my sources of revenue would be my two shops video views so 
I get paid from YouTube, Instagram. Um, I do have an account with TikTok to get paid, but they pay so low. I have never gotten paid. Like I probably could take the money out, but it's not, it's not much and affiliate marketing. So I keep those on the same line. And then again, I just do something like miscellaneous just in case something comes in. This could be like, I don't know, a brand deal or something like that. Um, I don't really have much time for brand deals cause I'm just, you know, busy with keeping up with my videos and doing, um, orders and stuff. So I don't really have time for brand deals, but one day I would like to get into that a little bit more. Um, so next is going to be my variable expenses and fixed expenses for my business. So I kind of set up, you know, similar to the personal budget, put variable on this side. I'm going to put um, fixed on this side. This is always, <laughs> Oh, y'all, I'm so not a lefty. Y'all don't talk about me too big, okay? I'm like trying to figure it out. Cause I'm telling you, before I started making these videos and I would just do this off camera, I would flip this plan around and, but I don't know. I feel like that would be weird. So, also live near Main Street. So if you hear cars, I apologize. For variable expenses, my go-to is Amazon. My next go-to is Target. I do get some of my ink for another, I have uh, two printers. So one of my printers does the instant ink and the other uh, printer does regular ink. I have to go buy it. Then I have my artwork or my designs. Next is going to be shipping labels, which is really um, for Shopify because Etsy just um, takes out your labels from your account. Shopify bills you separately. And then any Etsy bill that may come in, which doesn't happen often, but I put it there just in case. For fixed expenses, I have Canva Pro. I, guess I can tell you guys. Um, these amounts so canva pro is 13 dollars a month really 12.99 but around hp inc i don't know if this amount is going to change but my first bill was 28 dollars and then my last fixed expense um is the app that i use on shopify and it is ten dollars so put the totals down and I need to go ahead and tally up the um, fixed expenses since I did go ahead and show those amounts so and I think uh, I had, I used to pay my mom office rent because my office used to be, okay, let's try going this way. <laughs> my office used to be at my parents' house. So I would give my mom like $50 a month to like, um, you know, just for like appreciation of her allowing me to be there. But I don't have office rent anymore because my office is here, honey. All right, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is put down um, the strips for profit, taxes, and income. So I just put these right underneath my expenses because you configure your profit by taking your revenue minus your expenses. That's your profit from there you deduct your um, taxes and then after you deduct your taxes 
then this is your expected income or your take home pay. So this is how I do that. And then I do the last or the line underneath for additional expenses. So like for instance, in the month of January, I had to renew my um, subscription with Shopify and renew my domain. So that would have been under additional expenses. I pay my mom. So she goes under additional expenses and just anything that doesn't fall in these categories. Like if I'm working with vendors and paying them, I don't do that every single month. So it's not in these categories that will go under additional expenses. And then I like to leave these last few stickers on the sheet because I don't know if my expenses are going to stop here or if I'm going to need to go to the back page. So I usually leave the back page blank for the business and then move on to this page. So just to do a little flip through of where we are so far. So we have our calendar, our monthly budget dashboard page, our weekly check-in, our sinking funds and business budget. I'm gonna save this page for business budget and then this is going to be my transaction log page okay so for the transaction log page this sticker is actually like universal so you can really use it to track any type of transaction log you can use it for your variable variable expenses um you know if you don't want to do the weekly check-in thing if you rather just kind of have a book you know a list um in a row of like things that you spent your money on I used to use this script for um, tracking money that I was spending out of my sinking funds because I did um, empty them out at the end of last year. I'm not really spending money out of my sinking funds right now. Um, hopefully I will get to see my therapist. Y'all, she is living her best life in Mexico. So she is not here right now. She didn't even text me back, but she'll be back tomorrow. So hopefully <laughs> I hear from her. Um, that's like the only sinking fund that I'm going to be spending money out of anytime soon would be my medical one. So what I'm going to use my transaction log for this month is, um, keeping a tab of my Valentine's day party expenses. So it is going to be small. I like to do small things. I don't like, you know, tons of people at my place. I don't want that don't want to disturb my neighbors and all that and just be you know ridiculous so it will be a small number of us i'm super excited about it and i want to be able to tally up um if i'm able to say in budget or not so even though it has like the plus and minus and balance and i guess maybe i could start with like i don't know that weekend or the week before and maybe like put my balance as the 300 and then like subtract from there or I might just kind of just use it just right out everything will be under the negative and then I'll see at the end of the month what my balance is so I'm gonna leave the rest of this page blank because I don't know how many lines I need but we will be keeping track of the Valentine's Day party expenses uh, right here and I probably will show y'all the expenses throughout the month so that y'all could just see how it's going but yeah that'll be fun so the next page is going to be my savings tracker. Um, and usually with this page, put this to the side, I'm gonna actually make a little note right here so that I know I'm just writing a little note that this was my um, transaction log. Cause I will save, I save my stickers in the back of my planner in the pocket. So, what I notate with my savings tracker is how much money I'm able to save in cash. Um, it does get a little bit interesting considering that I am starting to use my leftover money from my cash wallet f um, for my savings challenge. Cause I used to not put that money toward anything. I would just put it in my bank envelope at the back of my wallet and it would go back to the bank at the end of the month. Now I'm using it for my saving challenge. So the numbers are not as accurate, but I do still like to um, be able to look back and see like, okay, wow, I saved, you know, 
fifty dollars in cash this month or a hundred dollars in cash so i think in january i saved almost a hundred um dollars in cash it did go toward my medical sinking fund so it didn't go back to the bank but hey so i, I usually i have one two three four and i will do a fifth week so i will put the last sticker for five weeks down so i will put it here and total how much cash i saved so that for the most part guys is going to conclude this video because um as you guys know i did pay off my business loan in the month of january so i'm super excited about that the crazy part is i told y'all i didn't want to get another one and i'm actually considering getting another one <laughs> it was so clutch like and the loans are kind of small. They're not huge, you know, which I can appreciate. They're small um, and they are on automatic payments. So like, I don't even have to remember to pay them every month. They just get automatically paid. So y'all might be seeing me use a debt tracker this month. I don't know. We'll see. I'm heavily considering it. They offered me another uh, loan. And I'm like, uh, I don't like it, but in a way like, it's pros and cons y'all know that so yeah i'm considering um i'm also going to be using my paycheck stickers this month i'm thinking i probably will put the first paycheck one here and then paycheck two and three should be able to go here and then paycheck five i mean paycheck four on the back um just because i have been using my paycheck um stickers to help me kind of like keep up with my weekly checks and making sure that i'm taking money out and putting my money aside for my expenses making sure i'm putting my money aside for taxes and all that stuff because i really want to do a better job at keeping up with my business numbers and records for next year's taxes so y'all will um y'all may see this in a future video i'm not exactly sure but yeah guys so that is the end of my budget planner i'm gonna take y'all from the beginning so y'all can see it they are so loud it is super late but there there's the calendar monthly budget and dashboard page weekly check-in page sinking funds page business budget um transaction log and savings tracker so i hope that you guys enjoyed this video um, I hope that it has inspired you to set up your budget, your budget for February. I hope that, um, you know, you're able to have a good month this month financially. So you guys will see me again tomorrow for another cash stuffing. Make sure you tune into that. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up for me. Leave me a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe if you like the content. And I hope to see you in tomorrow's video. Bye.